I don't have a fancy name for this case, so I'm just gonna call it the Van Murder. On 7th April 1995, the body of this person was found in Sambawang. I'm not gonna try to pronounce the name because I am sure as hell gonna butcher it, so I'm just gonna call her Debbie's. Debbie's body was found to be brutally slashed, and not only that, it seemed like her body was ran over several times with a vehicle before being abandoned in the forested area of Sambawang. The chief suspect of this case was this man here, which was her boyfriend at the time. I'm also not going to try to pronounce it because I'm also going to butcher it, so I'm just going to call him Raja. Raja was arrested a few days after the body was found, and he was charged with murder. After he was arrested, his van was inspected, and it was found out that several gold items and jewelries were found in the van itself, as well as a tooth fragment. This tooth fragment was later sent to another country, I forgot which country it was, for DNA testing as no DNA specialist was found in Singapore at that time, and once the results came back, it was found that it belonged to Debbie. Also, the tire marks found nearby the body was examined, and it turned out that it matched the tire marks with Raja's van as well. Apart from all the incriminating evidence found so far, the prosecution was still able to pinpoint a motive on why Raja would want to kill Debbie. Raja has stated that he loved Debbie so much that he could not bear the thought of leaving her. And on the months leading up to the murder, Debbie has stated that she did want to end the relationship with Raja. So, hmm. The prosecution also did not believe Raja's alibi. Raja's alibi basically went like this. At around 12.15pm, he left work to go home. On his way home, his van decided to break down and as a result, he had to go fix it. And not only that, it was raining at the time, so there was a chance that the rain might have affected his progress when he was trying to fix the van. While in the process of fixing his van, he got a pager from his boss that told him to get back to the workplace, and it was around 1.45pm where Raja was finally able to fix the van, and afterwards he drove back to work. The prosecution found it hard to believe that Raja took over an hour to fix his van, and they even brought in a mechanic to testify against Raja. The mechanic said that it would only take around 20 minutes for an advanced mechanic to be able to fully fix the van and get it running. And if that wasn't enough, it was brought up that Raja did indeed also wash his van thoroughly on the day of the murder. In the end, Raja was found guilty and he was sentenced to death. However, as you already know, the title of this video is Unsolved Mysteries like I've repeated a lot of times already, so Raja did not die. In fact, he went to the Court of Appeals, and something happened. After Raja filed for an appeal, the Court of Appeal found that the High Court's judgment was not strong enough, and that the judge had mistakenly convicted Raja of murder, despite all the evidence and arguments from both the prosecution and defense. See, what I haven't said yet was the defense's counter-arguments to the claims that the prosecution made. To start off, it was found out that the tooth that was flown to another country that I forgot to be tested for DNA actually contained a separate DNA profile, meaning that it could have been contaminated on its way. Not only that, but it was revealed that Devi and Raja had been known to be intimate inside the van itself, and Devi had been known to bite off the beer bottles with her own teeth. So there was a chance that in one of these incidents, Devi's tooth might have fallen out when trying to break, the, break apart the beer bottle. Also, the tires that would have been matched with the van itself was found out to be actually not really that reliable, so the Court of Appeal gave Raja the benefit of the doubt. Thirdly, regarding the time it took for Raja to fix the van, it turned out that Raja was actually not that well trained of a mechanic, so there was a chance that Raja could have taken longer than a well trained mechanic would to fix the van. Moreover, the mechanic didn't really understand the true nature of Raja's van. Raja's van was around 20 years old and it had a habit of randomly breaking down and randomly starting up again. So there's that to take in consider. Also, he was on his way home when the van broke down. So there was a possibility that he wasn't in that big of a hurry when he wanted to fix the car. And as a result, it actually took him longer to fix the van. Also, Remember earlier on how I said that it was raining? Well, to reiterate, there was a chance that when it was raining, the rain might have affected his progress when he was trying to fix the van. 
ultimately forcing him to spend more time trying to repair the van. Regarding the gold jewelries that was found in the van itself, the Court of Appeal said that the, these jewelries were way too common to be considered only Debbie's one. And this piece of evidence, I felt like that one was the most shaky because who else would have had gold jewelry besides the girlfriend? Okay, if, if Raja had it, I'm not judging, but hey, it, it, it is a bit... that That's the only piece that I find a bit strange. And also the fact that he washed his car on the day of the murder. Everything else, like his van breaking down, I can maybe believe, but him washing his car and jewellery found, those two parts are the ones that I don't really believe about it. But apart from that, yeah. Okay, moving on. With all of that in mind, the Court of Appeal eventually acquitted Raja, and no other person was arrested for this case. Hence, this case remains unsolved.